I noticed in the comment section of my last video about this fight and also the comment section of Chris Andre's video about this fight that there's quite a lot of people picking Craig Spider Richards to win. And this is a perfectly reasonable prediction because Richards has proven himself to be wily, savvy, awkward, and I think an underrated puncher. So it wouldn't at all be a monumental, mind-blowing shock for Craig Spider Richards to pull this off. But I'm still favoring Joshua Boazzi. Now, there was one person in the comment section of my video who said that they expected something similar to Michael Watson versus Nigel Benn. For those of you who don't know, Michael Watson handed Nigel Benn his first career defeat. I think it was in like five, six rounds. And he actually stopped Nigel Benn with a jab. Ben was absolutely exhausted by the midway point of the fight. But I don't really see the comparison here because Nigel Ben would sell out in every fight from round one early on in his career. And by sell out, this is an old school boxing term, which basically means you would empty the tank. Ni Nigel Ben, when he was coming up, literally was like Alan Babich where he put 100% into every shot. He had better technique than Alan Babich, but I'm saying in terms of his approach, he just went all guns blazing into the fire, right? Into the, into the fray. That's how he was. And so it was pretty much, in retrospect, inevitable that he was going to get stopped the way that he did get stopped by Michael Watson, who just weathered the early storm, kept everything tight, nice and neat, and he was able to stop Nigel Ben. He drew his sting, took him into deep waters and drowned him. With Joshua Boazzi, he's aggressive, yes, but he's not that reckless with his gas tank the way that a young Nigel Ben was. He's more measured in his approach. He thinks about what he's doing a little bit more. And I don't think pound for pound he has that kind of punching power anyway. Joshua Boazzi's a good puncher, yes, but I don't think he was the kind of dynamic puncher that a middleweight Nigel Ben was in his prime. And as I say, he's not that hyper aggressive. So I don't really see that comparison personally. I can definitely see Craig Spider Richards winning rounds for sure, giving Joshua Boazzi plenty of trouble, definitely. But for me, you know, regardless of the technical breakdowns and all this kind of stuff, it comes down to the essence of both fighters. Boazzi is an absolute savage in the ring, right? To borrow Alan Babich's moniker for a second. He's a savage in the ring. He will do whatever it takes to win a fight. We've seen him be dirty in several fights. And I just think that that will will be too much for Spider Richards in the end, who is more of a passive guy in the ring. I've seen him far too many times give rounds away, not do enough you know, and then all of a sudden pull a shot out from nowhere. So look, again, Spider Richards has definitely got a chance. It wouldn't be a monumental shock if he did win. But personally, I'm going to go with Boatsy because I just feel like he has the stronger will. And I do think that will will be important in this fight. Of course, skills pay the bills. If you are the strongest willed guy in the world, but you don't have any boxing ability, no boxing skills, and you go in there against somebody who can box, you're going to lose, <laughs> all right? But with Boatsy and Richards, they're both skilled, you know? Is Richards a bit more awkward than Boatsy? Has he fought at a higher level? Does he have more experience in long fights? Well, let's look at it here. He certainly has more experience in long fights, but how much more? So he went 12 rounds against Dimitri Bivo, as we know, nine rounds against Shaq and Pitters, 12 rounds against Andre Sterling. Also 12 against Frank Bullioni. 10 rounds against Alan Higgins. So he's been in several long fights. Joshua Boatsy hasn't been in that many long fights. The longest fight of his career was last time out against Bolotniks, who he stopped in 11 rounds. Now the thing that you should note from the Bolotniks fight is that he produced power late in that fight to stop Bolotniks. So even if it's a tough one with Craig Spider Richards 
and he's maybe getting outboxed here and there, could be down on the cards, he can force the action and take you out of there even late. Now, I'm not necessarily picking a stoppage defeat here. I think that Bratzi has the power to get uh, Craig Spider Richards out there, but Richards has proven himself, as I said earlier on, to be a very savvy and wily operator. So I think it's going to be difficult to get him out of there. I, I'm sure that Bratzi has the power to, but it's whether he can get the necessary shots on in order to be able to do that. So yeah, that's my final thoughts, I guess, on the fight. I'm still sticking with Joshua Boatsy. I think that he has enough in terms of skill, but also that tremendous will, and it'll be a little too much for Craig Spider Richards. Now, to finish off <laughs> with the whole height gate, somebody in the comment section called it height gate, right? And it's just a bit of fun. A lot of people saying, oh, it's obvious why, why uh, they appear to be different heights in different videos. Huh? It's because of the trainers. Yeah, what? I didn't say that in the previous video, no? You need to clean your ears out. <laughs> Certain man, you need to clean your ears out and listen to what I said. Anyway, where are we at? Here. So <laughs> there was somebody in the comments who said, the real mystery is why is Eddie Hearn, if he's 6'5", no taller than the fighters? Bro, come on. <laughs> Please don't ask dumb questions. You do understand that there's a thing called perspective. If somebody's further away from the camera, then obviously they're going to look smaller than things that are closer to the camera. Come on. Please. <laughs> a child can figure that out. Stop it. Anyway, back on to height gate. Now, if we have a look here, Eddie Hearn stood next to Boatsy. Eddie Hearn is 6'5". People keep saying he's 6'4". No, and even 6'3". No, Eddie Hearn is 6'5". Okay? Now, Boatsy is 6'2". So there should be three inches height difference between Boatsy and Eddie Hearn. And that's what it looks like to me. That looks like a three inch height difference to me. Yeah? So I'm saying Boatsy is, <laughs> is a legit 6'2". Eddie Hearn, 6'5". So... That looks about right in terms of the height difference between these guys. And I'll finish off by, again, I'm not saying that Boatsy or Richards were doing this. It's probably just Boatsy was wearing thin-soled trainers and Richards was wearing thick-soled trainers or maybe the other way around in the first video. Boatsy was wearing thick soles and Richards were wearing thin soles because at the weigh-in, they were both wearing trainers. You can't say that somebody was barefoot at the weigh-in because I saw the feet. <laughs> anyway. This is what I was talking about in the previous video <laughs> regarding Vladimir Klitschko wearing lifts. Now look here at his face-off with Tyson Fury. Look at this here. He's taller than Tyson Fury at the face-off. Yeah? And if you scroll down to the feet, you can see why. Look how puffy the trainers look at the top here. Look how puffy they look. It's because Vladimir has got those lifts inside his shoes. That's how he's taller than Tyson Fury. Fury's at around six, seven and a half, something like that. Vladimir Klitschko said he's six five when he measured himself. Could be possibly six six, but there's no way that slightly thicker sole. Because look, Fury's trainers have got a fairly thick sole. Vladimir's a bit thicker. There's no way that that alone could account for this him being taller than Fury by like what an inch or so. No, no. Vladimir had lifts in his shoes. Look at that there. You can see how puffy the top of the trainers is because he's wearing those lifts inside and it's pushing the top of his foot up against the top of his trainers. <laughs> so Vladimir was on that BS trying those parlor tricks to try and intimidate Tyson Fury. And you really have to wonder about the psychology of a fight. Remember, this is a long reigning champion. Loads of defenses, knocked out countless people. And he's resorting to stuff like this to try and intimidate Tyson Fury. I think that's testament to how much of a threat he thought Tyson Fury was. And of course, it wasn't just stuff like this, you know, the uh, lifts in his shoes, but it was also the spongy canvas, which he did with many fighters, of course, and many other shenanigans that were going on behind the scenes in the run-up to this fight. But anyway, that's by the by. I'm looking forward to the Boatsy Spider Richards fight. I'm picking Boatsy to win. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you picking Boatsy or are you picking Spider for the upset? I guess you would have to call it. 
I'm not sure what the bookmakers odds are, but I imagine Boatsy is a favorite. And again, for me, I want to say it's 65-35 in my head in Boatsy's favor. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below.